low. Let me know if the audio is good. I gotta turn it up. Mm. Might do a short one today. I'm not sure. Depends on how long I can stay in this position. And I don't know what's going on with the uh, YouTube the connection. It seems like everything's laggy and frozen. Sorry to my end, but then so I might have to go through one more like that. Hi everybody. Mantic Mystic, Alan Corpse, El Fai Peso, if I remember how to say that again. What the fuck is going on? Amaranthine Metanoia. Well, all that's all around you. He says, can you do a video on real sorcery? Probably not, but, uh, you know, all that's all around you. It's also your psychology. Um, it's what makes your mind uh, move. move kind of like your psychology. It's almost like an algorithm of what you can see in the world and how you've maintained your search, thought, feeling algorithm in action determines the depth you can see and as well the depth of your action and so manipulating people's psychology manipulating your own intentions and influencing the world through that is kind of the definition of what you're talking about um, and that's all around and it's also uh, it's like a serious topic it's also dangerous you know playing video games anything we do to ourselves with the world or with another involves even invokes powers and and responses and energies that you wouldn't otherwise and so it influences events and and others minds uh, outside of a range that we normally not necessarily don't have access to but we don't naturally influence with all of our emotions and energies and so then doing something that injures or distorts could take very long to you know uh, restore and so as well we're all uh, learning and, and being kind of bombarded with energies and influences so we're on this kind of particular it's like we all have a duty or a quota we have to uplift of that not even system because it's just like a mindset there's a way of mind in order to return or I increase self-awareness and uh, really control in uh, in this place. I'll try to up uh, increase the audio on the uh, replay of that first part if it's too low to hear so that the replay will have better audio. And so I'm not really projecting. I'm kind of not trying to tweak my back. Yeah, Mystic, there's information there if you know where to look and how deep um that's basically if you see mantic mystics content uh comment we have much to cover uh, shall we do the old roundabout and return home or straight shoot the eye of l and that's connected to someone uh yellow rose for texas um the, her information which is also it's connected to the information that's been around for a while it's like another layer of it um so it's the same thing you can find anywhere but you won't find it in that way other than through there at least it's, it's everywhere but it's, it's not put together you know they're kind of like it was what was used to confuse people but as, as well that was what they knew and they just confused us or other people did to just to make use of that but um it's like a big consciousness circuit like those toys in the doctor's office with the like the kids toys where you just slide the little thing on the little wires and make it go back to where they are um it's like a centric concentric kind of uh different version of that maybe like toroidal in that it undulates out in waves and the tracks kind of expand and um change as a result of that and so uh Try to keep my location in the chat. Um, and so the... It's like one of those electric clocks that spins and enables... Uh, you can read the time or it creates like a holographic image. 
not like through uh it's like a pseudo hologram it's technically the real thing it's like a fan if you have led words on the fan and then they kind of or just like a, a grid and then you can program it to spell letters in the air or spell the time or something and it's moving so fast you can't see the fan but because it's oscillating and and beeping or, or uh not pinging but like strobing there's another word for it when it's in sync but it's synchronizing that and alternating it so it's off when you can't see it and it's on when it's in range for you to see and so it just looks like letters or lights those lights floating in the air um, maybe that in the concept of a toroid and then uh it's it's light waves are even uh, audio signals bouncing back and forth so it's at the hertz cycle of whatever it's tuned to or whatever that medium or whatever that um transmission uh, energy is is capable of and uh so it's it's it would be as if it's our consciousness as we experience it in the brain now but everything that you experience in one life is undulating kind of like uh, the jacob's ladder how the electricity comes off and it it's like a never-ending uh motion or the electrical things on uh I always bring this up, that plasma ball kind of like novelty gift where it, it's like a little foil thing and then the plasma comes to the glass and you can touch it. And so it's doing that. It's undulating, bubbling, but it's electromagnetic waves. And each one of those like zap thing is. Uh, OK, sorry, I was reading the old audio messages. Um, one of each one of those like a, it's like a strobe light flashing so the zap and the bubbling of the electric electrical fields they're happening at the speed of light they're not even if we see them like in motion their interactions is a speed of light so uh, it's like a different scale of time to understand how our consciousness is experienced what we see as this course of time is actually happening um thousands of thousands of times a second just like uh I'm trying to think of a better way to to say it kind of like a light emitter or maybe like a stage light and if you had kind of concentric rings of maybe like diodes that would be electrified by that that light kind of like um fluorescent tubing and uh you can or i can't remember how you, you do it with an electrical field you can light up uh fluorescent tubes and and other other systems the 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 noble gases ignite or they they produce uh light and they they energize it on ignite in the presence of the field so they're not touching but in that field so that wave of energy coming off of the light to cause the uh, gas to excite excuse me and it and it glows you can see it it's not one thing going and it plugs into the light bulb and it's just like sucking in balls of electricity it's zapping it's happening thousands and thousands of times a second so our consciousness is participating in that in this large system which could also be seen as you know a microscopic system from another angle um so in that consciousness circuit there might be two different results from operating in two different pathways or two different courses i don't know how to put it that way because they're both the same it's kind of like the toroid or a uh line circle wave i can't think of what it's called but how the circle can also map out with this up and down motion to basically just being a wave and um I don't know, i'm distracting myself oh so the motions the circular motion is the same as the wave motion from a different perspective. So our consciousness circuit through time is the same as the circuit that goes around the grid concentrically, as well as the one that go the, the, the spike that moves directly through the center. But the experience is different. One is almost like an endless course of time that possibly repeats itself so many times that you have to be able to manage that amount of kind of cascade feedback or you'll in essence lose your conscious mind within that field structure of information which is basically your conscious signals bouncing back and forth between where you are in time then to now over and over again until it kind of builds up like a pyramid or a tower of living literal like a plasma construct and again if it's situated in a way that it's just bouncing around in random angles maybe like a uh fire uh what is it a bottle rocket with the tail cut off 
trying to be in another like a, a higher dimension or whatever or basically a non-local space another universe or wherever it is and accessing that information which would be experienced as the full expanse of all of the interactions at once like a you know plasma consciousness system instead of this linear consciousness system it could be like exposing yourself to a roller coaster that you created and at one point it hits an unknown amount of speed and it could be 100 million miles an hour or it could be like you know 50 but you don't know yet well the difference is big and so and again then the idea is that if this place is mapped out where we don't have the consciousness energy we don't have the the biological capacity to to make it through in that sense then the long way then the only option is more or less to punch through the center um, which you could see if it's a consciousness circuit and if you allow through feeling your system to waver and fluctuate with the undulations of the system you're in like a wave pool eventually it pulls you to the outside because you're oscillating very very quickly because everything is and so if it off center throws off center you end up on the outside of the system and it's now you have to like the sun in the flat earth model that you know whichever one is how it should be seen you can't just be on this and then go okay and go through the center and finish it takes thousands of years to wind back down and to get into focus. And some say that in the system that we're in, you would never be able to, again, you're, you're a thing spinning and then there's a fan. It, you're in the middle of a fan. If it gets, and there's magnetic system, it's light, it's energy, emotion. So kind of fill everything in. If you f allow an inside the spinning part of you, there's the same construct that's on the outside spinning very fast, but in a balanced form on the inside. If this outside gets imbalanced because of whatever's going on out here and we allow ourselves to match that imbalance we'll end up out here if this is the only way in and out then it's an untold amount of time until our, we get back and it's consciousness as well as physical because where your consciousness is is where you are in some type of higher plasma system that our bodies are just kind of like nodes in a network of sorry i got distracted a couple times with weird concepts Michael 777, so that's like where um, all that kind of a deep-ish knowledge, if you call it that, gets into mainstream uh, mainstream media. I realized the software clips the audio or it stops it from doing that anyway. Might be reasoning for something. Um, very, very deep, I guess... Uh, mythological or even science fiction because it's not science fiction if it's literally back in ancient ancient mythology it just looks that way then the way they're expressing it with spaceships and this and that and it's really cgi that is science fiction and if it was that stuff then that's not even science fiction it's documentary it's like hilarious but if you you know put all that in the right priority in your mind like yeah we don't know but if it was actually that then yeah that's a documentary of what it is and what we think is science fiction is documentary and all these things that are telling us other things are probably science fiction. But, uh, so Michael 777 says, Hey, I got a question. Was the black goo the, in the movie Prometheus the same thing that's inside of us? So I don't know if it's necessarily inside of us, but in that movie, let's just say, Chway, there's a dangerous black goo, basically chemical weapon that's used to kind of ter uh, terraform certain places and pe people in a way excuse me and so then there's the concept uh of the nanotechnology or nanite technology that was produced for whatever reason and has the effect of more or less hybridizing and rewriting and enabling artificial control over someone's consciousness basically creating synthetic consciousness and it's like a in that operation it's like a parasite a spider that bites you and then now you know takes your mind or something and it's tech but it's also probably or possibly between tech and living and so i'm not certain if the two are the exact same use in this sense because uh we'd have to be the people in the movie that it was used on in that way to to match that to you know if that's what happened here Maybe that happened elsewhere or something like that. Um, however, as far... So that's supposed to be, according to certain information, in the... Uh, and I guess what I was uh, informed of, in the Earth. That it's inside 
the living structure of the earth and more or less kind of that's where it's located and you know if it controls the ecosphere or whatever that's all you know deeper part of that information but you could say it relates information that references the human soul and planes of existence or energy planes of mind kind of cascading up and down either above the physical plane or below however it works or maybe the physical is in between and that what happens there pretty much relative again the motion is the same as the projection or the code and so whether we go around the merry-go-round circuit of mind in this consciousness circuit system we're either in or stuck in or whatever or we shoot through the center um my noise might determine where and how we go and in the same sense from another perspective where and how we go the larger perspective it never it doesn't change after it's not like all right it's all said and done now let's go on to change things and really get things done everything that's after said and done is a reflection of what's been done so uh maybe maybe even geographically uh like where literally your soul can fly around and where it flies around too kind of in a magnetic flux um or or self-empowerment or not whether it's being kind of pushed on the tides of magnetism or whether it's figured out how to angle itself properly like a space-time fish is determines one's interaction in that system if there's a kind of a soul containment system or fluid and in the center of the earth or below ground and then not necessarily a another bunch of whatever that nanotech stuff is and however it got here and uh, whether maybe there's another mapping of that your your consciousness system that can enable something other than whatever the possibility of that is if it's basically a black goo type uh, soul trap hell or whatever which isn't shouldn't be too shocking because we've had depictions of hell for thousands of years literally people being ripped apart by demons and as well it's not really even too shocking if bodies can go through that you know that happens to everything more or less uh, that decays then it doesn't seem it's really not even it's not that it's not shocking it's like that seems reasonable like why would it not be that way and then it would have to be the next level is that your soul has to get to a level your mind has to get to a level where you can remain in these fields of energy like you've created your own circuit where you can see what there is well enough that you don't change and you don't get stuck and wavering and pulled into that cycle again and again and again and again um and at that point then it would be kind of like time doesn't influence you because that decay physical decay or soul decay seems to be the reason uh it's maybe the like the anti reason uh, for it's really an illusion. You could say free will. We can't do anything we want and whatever we want because of gravity and time and weather. But as well, those are the things that enable you contrast to experience any sense of self that could be held back or could be exalted one way or the other. So it's really just the baseline. Once we get to this threshold of awareness, whether we've had enough. Uh, of one or another suffering and pleasure basically contrast that we get to a point where we choose to do what's necessary to remember and to install that awareness so we don't fall back below a certain level of forgetfulness because it's not really about you know other things it's whether we remember ourselves and what we've been through so that we can make uh, choices that go to places that are new and don't repeat the same process and again if you see everything's kind of like that we either come and like robots get stuck in this repeating cycle until there's no energy left or we do something different which is basically whatever wouldn't fit into that place as far as an autonomous repeating system you know true life which we see all around if you look excuse me so that's like a there's a these like three first three questions and they're pretty much full of uh informational references excuse me and uh 
yeah as well if you don't understand like there could be stuff back then we're all going to be geniuses and realize it hopefully it's not too late because we could create it now so why couldn't it create be created back then the biggest you know hurdle is oh yeah well we've never seen anything like this whatever the tech is you know self-driving cars or a hyperloop or something simple but still relatively new like that no reference of anything like that and you could do that easily they've had it for years so then as it goes on they're rewriting dna and so on well okay they're storing information in a drop of blood okay they're you know, nanite bioweapon doesn't seem my audio up. Yep, and of course, now I can't find myself. Sorry, I'm going to take a second to have to find myself in the chat. Okay. I hope it's not, the audio isn't messed up. If it is uh, messed up, I'll just go whoops, back and uh, boost it in the replay. I think I can do that. And as well, the audio is going out, and I can see it dropping it back down to a lower level. There's like a safety setting so it doesn't clip. Um, I talk too quiet, so. Maybe that was the old messages, but it was after. I'm also way back in the chat. I'm like back in time. I think uh, I think all the timelines are pretty much in some type of sync. Do you still feel that we're on the most optimal timelines and that time hasn't caught up yet? Um, I think everybody's has a threshold level of the information they can achieve. It's like the blockchain. Everybody has an, an amount of information within themselves that they've kind of been aware of that they've been working with. And if they've been working with it more than they've been working with stuff that's making them forget, then they're going to be able to look at this total spectrum of information that's out there and pull from that, just like a blockchain, what is in their account of the universe and it's going to be at a level now because of the information that's coming in greater than anything that was possible before um, and then we're all doing this in various ways and so i think for the most part a lot of this stuff going on is uh it's kind of like distraction but it's so that you can choose fully whereas if you saw everybody choosing it's kind of like voting Right now, everyone's consciousness is in the voting booths. You can't see what they're thinking. You can't see what they're thinking. Only the really, really vague-minded people are so blatantly obvious, you know exactly what they're thinking and doing. Um, everything else is just like a, it's like a mixing pot and a guessing game of what's going on. And maybe in that way, where you kind of can't see, not necessarily blinders, but shades or something, or like sections in a voting, uh, you know, voting voting booth set up in a or, uh, wherever it's held, excuse me. Um, and maybe that's the only way to actually get a relatively normal response. And it's because, you know, if we're all springs of information and interaction and emotion and all that together, people are so sensitive and so hyper-reactive that we, or at least people can't because we and people is not the same thing if you think about it but like we can go somewhere and it'll be fine if people all go somewhere it's going to burn down um and let, until everything's balanced enough but it's as if there's so much imbalance that you can't have them all in the same place and have them not influence each other and enter into a state of hyper reactivity where the results and responses you get from there on are no longer uh legitimate or at least predictable and at that point you, you don't really want to use it for something that's going to count for an influence for you know anything let alone the rest of time or next years or whatever so it's like they're it's a distraction distraction excuse me and is it uh motivating it one way or another yes and no because it's doing both it's it's carefully held that whatever way you think you're being motivated you choose to but you might not know it and you might be so so confident in the fact that you think for sure this is the way to go because it's what you choose or excuse me because it's what's necessary that you don't realize it's a choice it's a free choice to go one way or another 
But that's the point because that's what you want to find out. Who's making choices and going, I didn't have that choice. It was forced. I had to do this. When no, you didn't because no one else did. And so we want to know that. But uh, in a variety of ways, more and less uh, close to normal. We don't want to go into chaos land. At least, I guess, dip our toes first. You see the people who have been dipping their toes into, not chaos, but the truth, which cr- bombarded with you know, lies and illusion creates chaos, like it froths and fizzles. And one has to stay and the other not, or one has to be forever changed. Um, they're not like shocked and, and getting an adrenaline response from the cold water of truth being splashed over their faces, and they're not going to at least as much as others as it goes on. Um, so I don't know if that really answers your question, but it's always, you know, neither here nor there. And it's just amplifying in a way that it's looks like it could be, could be complete timeline shift and people are walking through the dimensions and they don't know it. Or we could just be all, you know, going along on this, a very interesting uh, year, which is also chaotic in certain ways. Um, but maybe that's again, one and the same. We call it this, but it's really that. Whenever we're going through things and so on, what we call timelines are shifting. And our biology, our, our mind, our ability to process information and whatever's going on within us is the universe organizing space and time uh, through means and in ways that it can't any other way. Um, the things you think and the energy you provide. Think about if you were a computer and you were adding in a simulation and you were adding to the sim. Well, you, what you add is just as important as the other person because it's so unique and so in-depth. Each one is in itself the greatest update or the most necessary update that it could be. Um, And in that sense, what if it's really mapped out that every single one is required or the whole system doesn't work? And that from then until now, everyone eventually has to reach their max potential for whatever you want to call it and enable... uh, whatever it is that they're going to do and in that sense add to this universe or universal simulation or whatever it is and get it in back into tip-top shape so that we all get to a high level of threshold which again is our highest form and then it cuts off and that's our baseline and we do it again with the next level and again that's linear if you see it it's a fractal flower where we're all doing it and getting through a threshold and then nine dimensions of civilizations do it and meet in the center and go into a Fourier transform into a new plane of consciousness trajectory which would be like a new dimension or if you were could possibly add a dimension of rotation to space and time if it was already there if they're already mapped out probably couldn't add but uh you could map out more of what wasn't seen before which is again kind of like a game it's like well so then you just drew in the lines a little bit more yeah but at first it was blur lines and now there's a universe so imagine where it can go eventually it's an interface make a bunch of information it acts as a map you can use that to determine where you are in your universe and use that to determine where other universes are in uh, reference to you. But let's keep going. Hi, Joy. 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 Santosis. Thank you. So glad. What a relief to see and hear you. I've been checking on Twitter every other hour to see how you're doing since your last update was. 12th of October, Twitter banned me on this lie. said I can't access my account because of strange activity. I have to reset my password. Then I enter my password to reset, and they say my account never existed, and there is no email. So work that one out. Joe Fusco. Yeah. Uh, Yellow Rose for Texas confuses me. I think it's the information that's confusing, and maybe the people that told us how it really was and isn't telling us or aren't telling us and again just take what i said why are they lying that's not what's really out there why are they what is this okay you have to not know or excuse me not have something definitive to go off of or if it is it has to be an illusion in order to know what you really think otherwise we're just going to get an automaton that repeats whatever's out there and in that point Well, that's what they're doing anyway. Well, soon it's going to be revealed as nonsense, and then they're going to have to choose. Or it won't be, and it'll just go like that. But it's they've been exposed, or at least 
now we know. And as well, only the people that can choose are the ones that know in that system. The ones that can't choose don't even know they can't choose. So it's almost protected or encrypted within itself until they learn to choose. Um, thank you, Haven. Enjoy. Hi, Kathy Azario. Pat Searing, first live. Good on you. Raphael Aegis, or Aegis, uh, hello, great to see you. I was wondering if you had any advice to help people with intelligence, honesty, and feeling survive or even thrive in such a cruel environment. Yes and no. You gotta learn to shield yourself. Basically, it's like this. I don't even know if I can say it that way. We live in a world with multiple levels of awareness, consciousness. We're so advanced, humans, all of us here, that in our race, all humans, some people could be so much more intelligent and so less intelligent, so much less intelligent, that it's nearing the divide between genuses um, more than bloodlines. And bloodlines might be like that in a way. And so not necessary species, although that's what it came out to be with all the over thousands of years with all the stuff that's gone on. But let's just say right now in this society, we're operating, if, if that's the right terminology, genus, I'm not really up on that. Um, but we're, we're, we're uh, beginning to operate in ways that it's like a muskrat and a mink or something, or just two different types of um, dogs maybe. But these are terrible analogies, also very fitting. Um, but we're more complex, <laughs> even if it is similar. It's like the next level of that. But in that sense, ultimately, if you're a person who's handling those animals, it's obvious to see why they can interact or why they can't. Um, and uh, and so on. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by the chat. And for instance, a farmer or a mink handler, like that guy, uh, Joseph Carter, the mink man, sorry. I was watching his videos for a while. He, he learned how to handle... He basically handles minks, which if you didn't know, they're extremely ferocious and they, they're the main predator, uh, not for food, but for taking one another out of their own race. Um, like nothing, they don't, they don't have anything else to worry about except for themselves and, uh, or people, I guess, or, well, I guess they don't, I don't know about their habitat and all that. Anyway, um, I didn't even know it would be possible, but he trains them and he takes them one or two wild but you can never really handle the wild ones the same way you can one from birth and then he trains them to hunt for him and uh to to get uh animals or pests or whatever it is uh, rats or whatever and so then he has dogs he has to the minks in themselves are so different that he has to train them to be able to operate in a pack and to work together or to at least not attack each other and not get distracted and then you see the dogs and they work together and he doesn't have to train dogs to work together. They know how to do it. They're, I don't know, it's in their system that that's the way it works. So, but then he also knows how to not have an accident um, where the animals won't like each other, whether they're the same race or not. And so, again, terrible, terrible analogy. Uh, but we're undergoing the same problems where people do not know how to be in the same space and communicate effectively to avoid confrontation, argument, or injury, in, including mental, emotional injury. Because if people piss each other off and then are, have to work around each other or just go the next the next door that they're on the list or whatever and then they're pissed off that time and maybe they get into it with somebody else, these, this is damage. This is taxing our, our society. I mean, look at mental, emotional damage and what it's done to our society in the past few months and years. As well as it's, you know, it's a basis of suffering here. And so, ultimately, you know what's going to go wrong. Confrontation with animals, it's food or sex or territory. It's not difficult to understand. With people, when these arguments, when these problems, or simply living in a cruel environment or something like that, whether it's the work or society itself or school or family, it's really, you have to remember a few things. It's not going to be possible to forcefully change the cruel environment without taking on a part of that cruelty yourself, even if it's in reflection to manage yourself. No, it doesn't mean that they can't change on their own. 
in response to kindness and care, but the the reasons that propel people to be a certain way are not fixed or replaced with good comments. It's fixed when they stop doing effed up stuff and, and letting effed up stuff control their life and their mind. You're not going to solve that by standing up to them or you're not going to solve that by being super kind and submissive. So it's like a, it's like a weird game, a chess game. And it's basically with our lives or our livelihood, if you think about it, or our sanity. Um, beyond that, there's a ton of stuff you can do. You have to develop a kind of, uh, literally a technical like layout or program for steps to interact with others through, by, with avoiding confrontation and so on. Ultimately, avoiding confrontation is ultimately what it is. Um, beyond that, when there's a hostile element, you have to understand how submission brings out more of that hostility it enables it and so you can't enable it's basically like living with i don't know uh, like pe a psych ward patient or uh, somebody who doesn't have control over themselves for whatever reason a chemical um an injury or something from birth or something happening to them that's the definition of somebody who's basically has mental illness that fits 90 percent of the people you're going to interact with <laughs> on a daily basis um beyond that i'm it's not medical advice because i'm giving you it's literally like psychological advice on how to handle the situation de-escalation um you know interpersonal communication uh techniques for de-escalating and promoting positive communication sit downs uh, helping them out, and then, you know, in exchange, can we talk about this? Like, literally, it's like a child. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to have to go through that. I did it a long, long time. And uh, I'm not doing it now uh, with the people that are out there. They're being crazy, and a lot of times they won't listen, and you'll lose more energy being not crazy with crazy people than you will just not doing anything at all and just leaving. Um, and honestly, if you know, I mean, you'd lose energy being crazy if you're a not crazy person, whatever that means. But if you're at the level where you can handle their insanity, it's not going to take energy from you um, in that sense, if you don't care. Uh, but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything because that's for uh, armed forces that can work with those things. And at one point they move in and crazy hostile people aren't, you know allowed to be crazy and hostile and that doesn't mean people just rioting or excuse me not rioting but running around and, and and breaking stuff and burning stuff that can be taken down once that evolved to like organized versions of that of course you're gonna there's gonna be a, a greater response and again that doesn't mean really anything in reference to, to to stuff like that that's going on currently because again i'm really talking about the mental condition or whatever it is which we've all seen from school, we've all seen growing up, we've all seen in our neighborhoods, the, the families that are one way or another, or your own family. Um, and ultimately crazy people that want to control others or manipulate them. And it's not like, do this, put your hand behind your whatever. No, it's literally like, submit to my insanity, to my disrespect, to my insult, to my, you know, brash, uh, way of life is that's was no brazen or crass i'm sorry i'm mixing up words again uh and it's simply passive passive aggressive you know passively annoy the crap out of everyone and be slightly you know like subtly disrespectful or subtly overly confident in a way that is disrespectful and like it's pseudo confidence and they're really just like broken on the inside and then where everyone ignores it do it do it enough and then they know now people get attention or they've gotten people's attention and then maintain that air of attention where no one goes against you and no one says hey could you keep it down or could you not could you shut the f up and get out before we all pick you up and literally throw you out of the second story no I'm not, we're not gonna do that um and once people understand once that whatever a hostile element understands that it's to go fishing and look for somebody to respond to their obvious negs their obvious attempt to get a rise out of anyone and everyone like a terrorist for their own power and then to always fight a winning battle where it's somebody who would 
not fight them back or not casually respond and tell them to go F themselves. Basically, all those people that act a certain way, they will never do that in the ghetto. I'm not going to go on that anymore. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Um, it's hilarious. You see, look at the videos. <laughs> um, and so they'll go to places where they don't think anyone's going to fight back. So it's, it's what people do and have done, whether it's in school or wherever. And so part of what I'm describing is not making yourself something that is going to be food in that sense. And it's your emotions. You're not going to do it that. It's your emotions um, and your mind. And it says part of that is when you experience that negging, realize it's not for you. It's for anyone. They're fishing. They just need food. They're starving. And if you do feel it and visibly you're, you're, you're pissed off, whatever it is, well, you just fed that thing that you don't want to feed because no one else would and it didn't have any other food. It's literally like the fall in the movie with the spirit parasite thing that has to jump from people to people. Um, and you'll feel it because if you're sad or pissed off the rest of the day, that's that thing feeding. Ultimately, and this went way, way out there. Now we're on another planet. Don't feed the interdimensional space parasite your negative emotions <laughs> in a cruel environment. Um, but really, don't uh, don't engage in hostile attempts to, to pull energy. Don't interact negatively. Don't be submissive if they see that kindness as some type of weakness to then use that as more to increase the hostility. Don't go crazy. Maintain yourself and ultimately get out of that cruel environment. Um, get your stuff together. You know, save up your emotional, mental, physical, financial, whatever it is. Get together find a better way, find a better place. Um, don't waste energy that could be spent proliferating the abundance in your life elsewhere in a situation where people are going to toss that out. You know, it's the common saying and the swine and the pearls and the whatnot. But as well, don't let that, man, I can't toss my pearls in front of these swine. Don't let that ruin your life because it's 90% of what's going on out there at this time. So that's the other aspect of it. And as well, it's basically like a like a hazing where you got to live and experience it's annoying uh that you got to live in a world where that's got to happen and then you got to you're supposed to enjoy living in the world like that more or less um because it was always like that you just know it now and again it's a duty we have it's this it's the properties of the world people are now becoming aware of that we let it get that way we let people do this we let a collective mindset go crazy on us and then like it and use us to go crazy on to pull energy up to develop itself like a consciousness in time as if that's a, a race a species a gender a demographic whatever it is crazy mean person that yells at you and does what you right so uh, and we know what that is but uh that's how you you uh i mean you don't take it down that's a team of people that will do it or we all starve the parasite and they gotta go find other things to do but in a situation where it's like, you know, you're kind of, you're not trapped, you're not surrounded, you're just kind of stuck in a situation, you have less options than you would want. Ultimately, you have to avoid something that would ruin whatever, um, this is like the last ultimately, I guess, um, in, for this comment. Anything that would ruin your situation worse than simply walking away and finding a better situation or simply living out that aspect of that portion of your life and getting to a better situation. Because anything less than that is literally them winning and ultimately it's literally just somebody pooping around or stomping around and kicking people out of their environment making them have to choose kicking them off the plane or whatever it is uh because that's how it works with parasites somebody who's slowly one percent of the emissions in a given moment and then 60 percent 90 percent in a given time sneaking evil basically sneaking being evil and mean that's the real problem because it's like stealing a portion of a candy bar, uh, a few pieces of pasta out of that box, half that 7-Up, and you can't see that it's gone unless you look as it's happening. And afterwards, it's like, well, who did that to you? Who? What happened here? Once you see it, though, and then how do you, you – if you catch them, you can barely catch them. Then if you do catch them, how do you prove they did it? You got to go into their stomach to get the ingredients and you got to put the video you know, evidence together. and You got to have witnesses there. Otherwise, it's, it, you could be making it up because stealing in that way, taking, attacking, insulting, terrorizing in that way is like littering. It is like a cowardly thing for consciousness to do. 
specifically because it's so difficult to catch and so difficult to stop. And the only way is by having a very good, you know, improved, far improved society where we don't tell on each other because of stuff that we don't understand, but we very seriously understand what negative energy, mental, emotional impact can, or how it can impact our society and run it into the ground and that that's what we 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 treat with ourselves and we treat with those around us and once we're all doing that you can very obviously see the people they stick out like you know something neon that don't have that essence because the truth is it's those who have the essence to be like all right yeah okay that was fun all right all right let's fix things let's get back together i'm sorry it's my fault blah, blah blah some people can't do that and they'll do it until the end until it's all over whether they went through a lot or whatever it is and again, it doesn't mean to be their monster, robot, whatever, whatever. A lot of people, are, they're going off the deep end. And it's been since years and years and years. It's not something new. Um, so we have that aspect of our society. We have that sitting in the deep of our minds, of our society. And that's fine because we can do something about it. What's not okay is that people don't know it. They, and if they get a glimpse of it, they pretend it's not there, then they forget about it. For a couple of weeks, being in their you know, wherever their location is, interaction with the same people over and over again, and they shield themselves from the truth of the existence of our species, of our humanity, and our history, and everything. That's not okay, because that, we can have bad dreams, and then we can make good ones, but we can't ignore the fact that we're dreaming, or that bad dreams exist. That opens up a whole level of stuff that could happen, and so that also relates to the, how do you survive, and all that, in the cruel environment by putting all that together and also remembering where you are and not allowing yourself to be hurt because that's a given but that's how hard it is it's like we're two different universes like we've never ever had to come to the place and then be like okay shields up all right where are we going like and plan out to not get hurt but you see this world has it's it's been invigorated and uh that means as well the bad got badder if you go look into the the bad parts um but it's just two worlds that were, you know, equally big that put together to create a bigger one, in a way, in a metaphor. We are beeps. Okay. Circle, circular, toroidal beeps. Like the dolphins, when they blow bubbles underwater. That was the concentric toroidal concept I was thinking of. Or there's a video where the whales spin in a circle to hunt fish. They basically catch them because they make a wall of... Uh, bubbles as they're in a circle excuse me i'm moving my hand and uh the bubbles rise and the fish can't get out of the side so they kind of rise with it like a deer you know or cow getting followed by a trainer that doesn't know how to get away from it because it doesn't turn away and uh, then they come to the surface and eat them all um interesting but if you see that video i think it was just released and that's weird it was, i think it might be like one of the only videos recorded or at least the only one i've seen of them feeding that way um those shapes are similar to the shapes I was imagining undulating beams of consciousness information running across this consciousness circuit in time that we call a solar system, you know, thousands of millions of times a second, whatever it is. I'm not sure how much. Hello, Susan Donahue. Nice to see you. Can binaural beats aid healing from trauma? Pat, thank you, Raffle, Raphael, Raffle, wow. Okay, let's ignore that. Um, So, can binaural beats aid from trauma? Yes. So, there's something called hemispheric syncing. There is binaural audio, binaural beats, where two tones are played in each ear. Your brain synthesizes a perception of the missing tone. There are two tones that are slightly apart, and it synthesizes the third tone, which then can have a conducive effect on brainwave hemispheric synchronization. Or excuse me, hemispheric brainwave synchronization. Or just simply brainwave synchronization. And um, apparently, so you can have these meditative states. You can use that to uh, go through your mind and psychologically change things and so on. But apparently, uh, hemispheric brainwave synchronization is a thing and is one of the primary, um, I guess, methods for doing that. You literally go to a location. They have them in certain areas. I'm not sure. You have to look it up in your area. And you sit in front of a computer. They put headphones on. The computer blinks oscillating lights, and you hear oscillating tones, and it recalibrates your hemisphering, your hemisphering, your, your, 
the different hemispheres of your brain, how many, the vast amount, the two hemispheres, they have to communicate in a synchronization, a synchronized format. Otherwise, it's like two fishing nets that get entangled and then they fold in on themselves and there's overing, there's information that gets cut out and those are mental glitches or they develop into schisms or whatever it is. Um, and you literally, they just have to, you, I mean, you can do it with visualization and I think they assist with visualization as well, but it's literally exposing it to stimuli in a, a, a format that enables it to see where the, uh, the glitch is. Maybe if it's slightly off and you have a flash of light, if you have one, it just sees a strobe of a delay. And I don't know if it's literally a delay like that. It kind of is, but it's also misappropriation of information and different firing. Um, and so then that's what's going on throughout the day. You're always seeing that and it's always off. It doesn't know. So they shine a light, then give you a tone and, and oscillate them so that the brain has a full beam of information to work with. And then it can kind of maybe bring them back to center. It's like two fuzzy images and they allow your, 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 uh, eyes to focus until it can bring them into right alignment, which will happen automatically. Maybe that's a good metaphor for it. Okay, I'm going to go in a few minutes. Ah, uh, some people, funny uh, videos. When are we going to leave, Og? Some people already have. Some people are on their way back. Um, it's happening as you want it to. As you see this construct changing because the minds of everyone within it are changing, and the boundaries that are required for it to contain those minds are undulating and no longer, they don't have the capacity, the, the basically like the elastic uh, capacity to, to shift and keep people's minds in. That's, that means whatever algorithmic informational construct matrix of simply time and space holding the interactions of, the electromagnetic interactions of thoughts, feelings, actions, energies, um, in whatever we're, we're in, that means within that overall system, we're moving to a different area. Um, we don't necessarily have to leave earth. I'm not sure if that happens. And the truth is earth is probably surrounded in a bubble and it floats wherever in hyperspace, our energy gives it the buoyancy or the, uh, density and lack of buoyancy to go to sink or to float. Um, like a big, jellyfish bubble or something and so in that sense a lot of people are leaving or they left already the other sense some people are done they're like no nah, we can't we're never getting out and they're ready to burn everything to the ground because they're kind of ready to get out and they, they're locked in a prison and they got to burn that to the ground to get out so you can see some are literally like walking on the clouds and some are digging their way what they think out of hell but they're going underground they're digging themselves down deeper and i'm sure there will be a balancing act of symphonic synchronization and harmonization of demographic hemispheres whereby the lack of response in certain ways to hostility shocks them back into a level of awareness that they have to recalibrate and reorganize their priorities and their conceptualization of the world in a slightly different or maybe more effective or efficient or articulate or accurate or beneficial format. Which is like saying that the one end of the equation always equals and balances the other end of the equation. Well, obviously. Um, but then, you know, who wants to watch that movie? The Great Equation Balancing. It's pretty long and pretty intense. If you thought your birth was intense. so Thank you, Raphael. Kate McFarlane. The golden mean spiral has been toted as these... Uh, the phi ratio, the golden mean, all these. And the phi is slightly different. Um, and again, so imagine if the walls of this construct have to mirror match shape mesomorphic shapeshift to match your consciousness so that you can never wherever you float yourself to it remaps around you then the algorithm of that boundary to reshape around your consciousness will look something like the phi or golden mean ratio and as well if there was within that something that was true and pure and not just a reference or reflection of the system responding to recreate itself around whatever consciousness is there 
the answer to what that true and pure is would likely be somewhere within the formatting of the phi ratio and its interaction in uh in golden mean in interaction in this world including the energies in this world what if you you know there might be it might be a gateway in or out of equilibrium with that boundary based con mind construct like your consciousness can overcome the golden mean spirals kind of re-attributing of space and time around itself and you can move faster than the speed of light mentally and it no longer you don't have boundaries in space and time you're beyond physical maybe maybe the golden mean un unwraps or something when that happens or there's this huge like unlocking of light from photons or something like that or some type of event that's been given a name and passed down through the mystical text and so on Lindica 2020. Hello. <laughs> Funny. Jackie Stenner, thank you. Um, Michael 77. So that's, I really don't know. Um, I had my kind of experiences in the uh, programs, and they don't really correspond to kind of what people talk about out here. They do, but in a most stereo, uh, st uh, most superfluous level. And a lot of it is also very like horrifying. Um, some people say it's a trick and a trap and you're downloading yourself into a, I don't know, a chemical based soul repeating system um, or maybe waveform based. And as well, uh, it's kind of a heavy topic. Um, I think I know what you're talking about as far as the second part, the, the, the only thing I can say is that regard, irregardless of the way you mentioned accessing it, in your mind, seeing your nightmares and seeing your highest pleasures or heaven, if you can recalibrate those to make yourself a better person, you can probably do what you're describing, which would be like the highest level of trauma or you'd have to, you know, like win a bunch of money or something and I have no problem. Or go, you have to go insane for some reason or you know, if it were to just happen automatically, or you'd have to practice this method of kind of reattaining yourself instead of letting yourself be something that's kind of a, not necessarily a product, but and it's not necessarily like you're being anything because we're talking about sound and mind waves. It's something in yourself, but it's in the formatting of your consciousness. And that, um, you know, and as well, the concept of trauma and heightened states of consciousness and all that and all the stuff that that entails is kind of um, more than necessary at the moment. And as well, you know, that kind of concept is more than necessary at the moment. Because um, it goes into weird stuff of how there are these experiences that everybody can have in a certain situation or, or uh, context in that because we all have them, they must be something that exists within us or something objective that exists that we all access. Going into that, I don't really want to, and changing those things or anything like that, it goes into such a way deeper topic spread. And um, as well, these times and places and experiences, as far as like people accessing them, you know, the astral or this, that, I don't really want to go too much into that as well because there's dangers and things that I have mentioned before. Um, and I don't know if I would use that method in that sense. However, um, probably just because of the act of doing it, whereas the technological and chemical methods that are used in, uh, by professionals in research and medical set, medicinal settings that are, I don't know, it's, it's completely different. They can, you know, I don't know how to describe it. You can use, do that with tech and then they're opening up different pathways. And so all that goes into a whole bunch of deep stuff, which people aren't really ready for yet. And I don't mean that I can't talk about it or anything like that. I have before. But the stuff that's going on right now, that's just the, the, the icing on the cake. If you give them that now, it will be over. <laughs> oh, because it's too much information. There goes that. Too much. <clears throat> Sorry. I've got some injuries. Too much information. And it'll just be like a, uh, a bomb or something. Mainly because they'll think it's cool. It's... I mean, maybe that's the only thing I'll say that it's not really cool and people are just going to get hurt unless you have like a military team around you um, for the most part. And I'll talk maybe more later or 
reference in uh, text or, or something at another time. Thank you, though. G-Man 58, all, all of these new timelines of us humans moving forward to 5D, there are no mentions of children. What's going on with the children? Technically, oh, truck. Technically, children are all already 5D. Um, so it's the way it's supposed to be seen, but I don't know, you know, I don't really like say like, oh, we're all going to end up uploaded into a new universal consciousness server and we're in our prime. But that's what it's supposed to be, that the children would be the adults in their prime or... Uh, there's another thing for the children that because they haven't reached that age, they everyone stays the age they're at or in your prime. And then uh, in a time and a place where consciousness was stabilized over eons and so on, where adults would stabilize children will become something more. Um, like, because uh, they're basically like God forms inside themselves. So, But all this is kind of different stuff. Um, if that's going to occur, then that's already occurred or it's there on the next level. For instance, you could see uh, children really do not have a spot in this fight, this argument that's going on around the world right now. They don't have a spot, but they're the ones that are being targeted by it. So um, if there was something to open or close whatever is going on here, it's going to have some type of interaction dynamic based upon that. The children and the adults, they're not a part of this fight, but they're the targets. Uh, Lindica 2020, I have a question. If a person don't go with the ascension path, what happens to them? Technically, you'd have to quite literally be like, F life, F existence, F everything. It would be extremely difficult. So the, the answer is, what would happen if you uh, choose to not go with the ascension path? You'll just ascend and not know it. Or like as it's happening, and you'll realize it as it's happening. Um, or you'll get to a point where the threshold of not ascending... And ascending at that point is a catchphrase, a buzz term. It means you're a human now, and they throw you into any era in history, and you're no longer susceptible to the human condition. You can see beyond it. You go, oh, you have the mental imbalance. Oh, these are just crazy people. Oh, they're gonna. We know what they're gonna do with all those people. And like you can see it coming, and you know, and it's no longer, and you're a part of it. You're an observer of it because your brainwaves no longer fit in there. You're ascended. Your brainwaves cannot be brought down to that level again. Um. And uh, so in that sense, you're just going to get to a point where you're seeing rock bottom and going, what the F am I doing? And you're going to choose to go that way. Unless it was quite literally, oh, look, rocks. Let's dive in. Like, no one does that, you know, for the most part. Even even no one really does that for no reason. Because even if people are doing this, like, they're part of this war going on. And they're not, like, choosing, you know, that out of all things that could be done. And in that sense... It would be like a, for somebody just to choose that over all things, it would be like a bear literally climbing the highest tree and just going, ah, and like skydiving off of it. It makes no sense. He has a bunch of better stuff to do, like catch salmon on his YouTube channel. Um, these are good questions. I got uh, no time, but I can maybe pretend I do um, so I can talk here. So, Stan Malone, from your perspective, is it true that the sun is the back end of a black hole? And is it true they're trying to replace the sun, trying to replace the sun with a fake solar sun? And how will it affect this? I don't know, but apparently it already happened. Moving on. Um, and it, so if it isn't replaced, it's been phased over where we have like a screen up. So we don't know if big, I don't know, something plasma emissions are going crazy or whatever's going on. And the sky turns funny colors because of all the, you know, atmospheric phenomenon. Uh, that's the story. I mean, geez, just imagine what's going on. And everybody's like, oh, you can't handle this. What if they were like, oh, look up. The universe is spinning like a top and nothing makes sense anymore. Okay, they wouldn't not handle it. They just lie down in the streets and never do anything again. And we'd have to sit there with that. So it makes sense to if that's what's happening. I'm not sure it's gone all the way. I know in the future it's supposed to, uh, uh, there's supposed to be differences in the way it works, and the, these happen regularly from the time, to t like the larger perspective of the universe, but we're, you know, species exist in blips of calm. Everything, the last exploded, and now it's calm. And then in that time, the arrangements occur, and the, uh, you know, elements align, can't think of the word, the, the possibilities arrange and align, that eventually there's a, an, a 
you call a sentient race and basically ascended race humans are ascended if you will like how do we ascend well do you you know migrate and then hibernate and scratch your balls and stuff excuse my language no because we're sentient then we're like what the is going on why is there that over there and what's that means your mind is not a part of this autonomous system anymore you're awake and thinking that's an ascension and maybe the ascension is when we again can can't be pushed back down into the uh, the muck um you could pick somebody up and drop them off in those crappiest situations and they're shining at high consciousness period because that's how how they are um like they're they don't exist under the threshold anymore than they have to try to push to to get to high consciousness they're actually stooping down slowing down so they can comprehend what's happening here because it's on the other end and in that sense where there's one end and the other and it's like you push to get to this end now you're stuck here well now it's pushing over here you have to push to get down in dimensions maybe uh you know it's like the uh sun could be a black hole and in the universe that the sun came from it's a black uh, excuse me a, a black hole um the sun's a white hole, if you will, in the universe where it came from, a black hole, and all the energetic charge, every the alignment, the magnetic alignment of everything in this universe on the side of the universe where the sun is a black hole, just like a wave threshold, it's like a coin that's flipped or something, is inverted. It's the opposite. And in that place, everything that's being expansive in what it is here is sucking entropically into the black hole to get out here or something like that. Or it's simply being inverted and pulled in by that. I don't know. That's the idea of that's one of the ideas um apparently it's supposed to be something like that and the uh i don't know because we're looking at two different models and of course and you know it's probably obviously that in one view there's a physical system we've created or we work with and in another it's completely energetic and so on and we're navigating you know like on a software for a system through lines of code which are made to interact with the kind of magnetic fields coming off the magnet of iron bar and in that sense we're in a kind of big, uh, accelerator system where we can shift physical things by shifting those magnetic lines and re um, and in that sense a kind of klein bottle inside out dimensional recycler system would be kind of sensible the confusing part do they ever meet up does a black hole ever go out this way? Now it's a sun here. Then this sun goes and collapses and goes back into, or the stuff in this universe collapses into a black hole and it goes into that one. Or does it go into another one? And another one, another one, another one, and they never meet back up. That's the the weird part. But there's all supposed to be uh, all types of stuff. Uh, basically, it's just that. I don't want to go into other stuff about beings and theories and time and consciousness and civilizations on the sun. Um... But can we figure out how that works in a physical simulator, like a physics simulator, and understand where our consciousness, consciousness is coming from and more or less our, the gist of how we fit into that? Ultimately, the gist of how we fit into that is the gist of it, the Yellow Rose for Texas video, where part of that interface for the magnetic fields, part of shifting time, it's our mind and our souls, our consciousness, everything we've given forth. You know, everything we've done as a record of what we're going to update, excuse me, update into the sim and literally have as a represent representation of ourselves forever. Or as long as this reference that we have to know ourselves exists. And if the reference doesn't exist, then what is, we don't mean anything. So, um, that's a big thing. Um, and as well, uh, I think that's the more important part. What does it mean to our consciousness? Do we fall into a black hole? How do we not? If we shouldn't, if it is coming, what does that mean? We probably need to get past a faster than light threshold, what they term ascension, by a certain time. Otherwise, we're going to get compacted into a black hole. Um, and our soul would at that point. And if it were, you'd have to do the spiral thing and shoot out the center of it in order to hit a faster than light, whatever you would call that, um, uh, like Stargate hyperspace jump. In order to avoid that and if that's the how it goes here well then that's the challenge of every being of sentience in this universe which is like a weird thing <laughs> i don't want to say it's a game or a hell but again if you wake up and you're hungry and you don't know uh, then you're starving okay that's like hell but if you eat food oh now it's heaven no it's not it's perspective we're doing things here and if you, you keep up it gets interesting 7 lvx 777 they say right yes hi i hope you're doing well too 
Does blood over intent release you from the soul trap? I think the soul trap is living in the world without knowing yourself and getting stuck on this consciousness circuit simulator merry-go-round that automates whatever you added to it that could be imbalanced in a way that literally is like grinding brains inside of a drying machine and it just like runs all the energy out. Um, maybe that might be a metaphor for something else if you think about it. You know, I'm not sure. I, I said it before, even with Devin in a chat, in one of our chats, uh, he seems very cool. Um, that harming the body, and uh, you know, I, the thing that came to me is to harm the body that way is not what I want to do. And we we're, you know, in a way, I was told or, or shown against it. But that doesn't mean, you know, I'm literally the most harmed body here. So I've done enough of that, you know, sports and so on. Uh, but I didn't intentionally do it, at least, in that sense. It's, it's just a weird thing. Could an intentional harm of the body be exaggeratingly drawn out in a scalar dimensional format that it equates a war or, or something like that? Or could it be, I cut this out and now that's there, but it's just some of you, which is terrible. But in another format, another view in the future, could it say, well, we can take this chip out of this guy's brain because he got abducted by the uh, whoever, whoever, at, you know, 24. And because he participated in this, we don't have to get his uh, permission because we can't. He's off stuck in a fake matrix thing. We can't get his mind. We'll break it. Uh, but because he put, participated in that, because he did that, we know we can modify his body for the benefit of removing him from the system. I don't know. It could. It could be a metaphor contractual agreement like that. But it could also be, okay, well, now we can take this guy out. I'm not the person to ask for stuff like that because I don't have the definitive answer. I just have guidelines of what I've been shown and what I've gone through. Um, so I'll just give you both and then you'll be more confused. Um, but I'll do my best and, uh, and so on. At the very least, look at where the world is now. So all these things that we saw changed things in the, the past months and years. It's either that or it's a coincidence. So something is taking effect and, and certain things are happening um, and they are influencing the world. Uh, how that, uh, you know, if right or wrong, and then what's really going to happen, I don't know, are, are happening as a result of all these things, excuse me, brethren, or, or as a result of the things that cause these changes, which are also changing everything else. Whether, you know, all these people that did these things are actually doing it. I do know that people doing these things as far as, you know, making videos or interacting with others in these ways, it is helping them to understand because you have to have whatever the rigid thought in your mind is of how things are supposed to be. You have to have that, uh, not shut off, but you just, you have to have it loosened. You can't pretend that you're not going to get overwhelmed for the most part. Hmm. So, okay. I'm supposed to finish. But these are good questions. Joy Santosis. Question. I saw a lot, lots of beings on one of the Saturn moons that wanted to be free. Are you aware of them? I don't know. I don't know about the plane system that we have here. It might be planes of consciousness you acti uh, activated or accessed. It does seem to be that there is a kind of consciousness parasite that either annoyed and pissed everything off or, or infected everything to create that boundary matrix perceptual system that reattributes itself like an algorithm around you um, and sucks energy and acts as a beacon for the people who made it probably. That seems to be a trend here. Um, also, this might be a light system and it's like a disco ball mixed with a snow globe and the light goes out and comes back and goes out and you're seeing a version of realities populated by beings that possibly are some reference of yourself your genetic continuum basically or someone on earth and basically whatever you see is a dynamic phenomenon that's engaged with in part the one seeing and the place that you're seeing from so it could be you know which is again more confusing but it's this weird thing that it's not out there it's in here and it's not them it's other aspects of what us exist as which doesn't mean you specifically just this consciousness system and it could also be that's one that looks just like that 
as if it's us. And it's an, a mirror illusion. Like the, it's, it's an intelligent automated uh, system. So it's creating versions of realities that it thinks we want as the next plane to, to interact with, which is also why it's so, so important what we're doing here to determine what's going to happen if it's whatever. And you can also see, I don't want to go into it, but you know, the things that went on when they were like, all right, let's make the craziest stuff. And then we're like stuck with that, or they were, or we were the people in the systems and programs and all that. You can, you can't imagine, you can't imagine because beginning of doing that process makes you go a little loopy or crazy. And then the craziness feeds into that amplification of possibilities and you get the craziest stuff. And I don't mean like you, it's like it breathes it or manifests it, you know, sentience, beings, issues, whatever, biology. The universe brings that up and says, okay, now this is the new challenge. And so part of it is like we're playing a game simulator version, whatever, and we just keep hitting hard. And it's like, okay, spin that so it would be like 32 times hard. No one would play that, but we keep doing that, not realizing we're breeding chaos. And then as it comes back to us, it's beyond the level we could heal with alone ourselves and, and still enjoy whatever we were doing in the first place, which is ultimately just a trick. And it is that um control program that we talked about the very first uh question that seems to be everywhere or this first or second or third um that seems to be everywhere and we're all dealing with that uh we have to turn that down first before and and, and give to ourselves before we can break free of whatever that is um if that made sense jesus a lot of questions okay um i'll try to go through a few more um Star Navigator, greetings from Argentina. Argentina, if I said it right, Argentina. Um, all right, so Kate McFarlane brought up some of the stuff I wasn't really interested in talking about. Black goo has the DNA of the Nephilim, Egyptian, Sumerian, gro- Sumerian, Sumerian gods, and they have and are bringing them back to life. And then other names, golems. And so research that, the early Egyptians the early power masters, they dealt with making life. They dealt with creating duplicates. Why would they not? And consciousness expansion, uh, basically free energy. Everything that's advanced that we're with our tech billion dollar labs, they were doing back then. So just research into that, please. Thank you, Kate McFarland. Ashley, can't make Ashley McLean. Wow. See, I'm getting like tongue twisted by every word now, every name. Thank you. Good to see you. Every name. Thank you. Good to see you. Ah, uh-huh. G Man, I think I answered that about the uh, uh children. Um, they're classified ascended beings, unless something's gone wrong or something something was done. If you know, again, ascended beings, it just means brainwaves are in a different kind of categorization of the human condition, where everything entropies back into self destruction, or fear controls them. Children process fear, and it fuels their enjoyment in life, unless it's abuse, um, or just so much it's not right. Um, it makes them get more creative. It makes them get more interested in things. Unless it's, again, too much. GMW, there you go. The sun in the sky is a reflection of the original shot through the frozen moon, le- moon lens that sits atop the black hole sun at the core deep, deep in the abyss, the moon's lens at the North Pole. Research that. Just research that. Just going to keep scrolling on. Uh, when you see it, you can't unsee it, and you'll know fighting with all of us down here is what you're doing to avoid the truth. Not you, but just, you know, like anybody. Time is relative, as is your mind. But don't think for 30 seconds. Don't think for five minutes. Five, excuse me, five seconds. I don't know how many people are doing it with me. Okay, well, you have to do that for the end of time if something messes up. So time is relative, but our consciousness is not. I mean, it is technically, but it's attached to a living organism that runs out or gets more energy and drawing any one of these um, scales far beyond the 
the range of our biological, you know, access or capacity for handling that is the same as jumping off of something really high and it's too much for your knees to handle the weight. It's literally the same thing. Only you lose your mind. <laughs> thank you, thank you, everyone. Jonathan Matamoros. Michael Canham Free. Sounds like a song. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope the uh, audio works pretty well. Um, and so on. Reading the... There's a lot of comments. I'm going to have to try to look over these. I really don't look at anything that I produce ever again. Um, so I'll try to look at the comments maybe at least. Thank you all for, for coming here. You kind of, you guys brought me, you know, here. So kind of realize that, that I'm basically a reflection of yourselves in some type of weird projected format sent out and then shot back. And here I am. Uh, thank you. Much love. Everything's interesting getting more interesting i hope you enjoy and 